Okay, maybe maybe let's start. I'll I'll speak in English because we have some non-Polish speaking people. And, uh, yeah. So so today um, part will be a little bit. We will have two parts. One will be uh, quite a little bit mathematical, and the other part will be uh, a little bit of classical. I have quite a lot of material, so we'll probably not go through all of it. And I would uh, encourage you to ask as many questions as you as you come up with. There will be for sure many doubts, uh, so please ask, and we can explore different directions uh, as as we go along. Um, is the recording on? Yes, yeah. it's we have started it and he left. So. <laughs> Um, so first, maybe who, who, who knows part of uh, part of mathematics that's called universal algebra? Has anybody on news uh, heard about this name? It's it's pretty nice topic, and actually, probably most of you heard about category theory at least the name. And for category theories, this is a very fruit, fruitful uh, base for looking for nice examples. Um, and we'll actually find out that we know quite a lot of uh, ideas from universal algebra by using Haskell. Um, so universal algebra was a uh, was the mighty mathematics that uh, started somewhere around I think around forties of previous century. I'm not sure though, but that's what I believe. And uh, one of the main things was to, um, to unify approach to, to, to different algebras in classical mathematics. Uh, so the first question is actually what, what is an algebra? And in Haskell we have some examples. We have semigroups, monoids, uh, sometimes we use groups describing things. Uh, and some 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 other some other structures like structures coming from orders, so they're partially ordered sets, which are not maybe an algebra by itself. But if you require that every two elements have upper bound and lower bound, you can you can construct a nice algebra with maximum and supreme, and it has its lows, and you you can you can describe. It. So the, the basic thing actually to describe an algebra uh, is uh, to say what, what is an algebra is, is to specify the set on which everything happens. So it's, it's called, usually it's called universal of, of the algebra. Mm -hmm. I go downstairs and ask them. universal in this in this domain and then there are operations and because this domain treats try to have a universal treatment for every kind of algebra it, it try does not uh, define the operation itself it just says that we have some kind of operations indexed by, by some, some index and what is the only assumption that we have is that every operation is an operation on the set U with finite number of arguments. So this is basically a function from U times U. This is, uh, let's say, n copies of U of U uh, to U. And an, an algebra of, of some kind of type, where this type is what kind of symbols we have in our operations. Uh, it might be, it, usually it's a finite set, but it might be not a finite set. Um, 
And uh, yeah, so for, for example, if you think about semi-groups, semi-groups has only one operation, so this fi is, would be just, just this diamond operator, and this, and this product would be just u times u to u, plus some axioms, actually, to, to get them uh, semi-group. For, for a semi-group, the requirement is that, that this operation is um, associative, so the bracketing that doesn't matter. But you could also not assume that and consider non-associative semi-groups, which are a field in itself. Uh, and you could consider algebras with more structure, like when you consider a monoid, you, you add some structure actually to the algebra. You add a one operation with with this, this number is called RET. And for a monoid, you just add an operation with RET is zero. So u to the zero, like this is u to the n. So u to the zero is the, is the one point set. And this is, this is the, the man G. Uh, so the unit element. A unit element, again, it, it satisfies some axioms uh, that is a unit for the multiplication and things like that. Uh, you could also consider algebras that have only, only this structure. They have just a distinguished element. And these structures uh, are also appearing in mathematics, though not in algebra usually, uh, but in other domains. Um, and, and then it turns out that in, in, this, uh, in this very broad domain uh, where you treat all the algebras that you can think of of this, of this type you can do uh, pretty much the same mathematics that people are used to do when they're doing group theory or when they're doing uh, uh, so like ring theory or or any kind of domain specific uh, algebra theory and one very very beautiful uh, theorem from the from the 40s of the of the last century it was by Birkhoff and he was uh, he was trying to solve uh, a problem of describing set of algebras that comes from equational theories. So like, like for example, in semi-groups, you have one operation and you have this one, one axiom that says that A times B times C is equal to A times B times B times C. And this is, this is a, like a nice equation. And, um, and most of the theories that mathematicians were, were, were using were of this type. And um, like for monoid, you have one, one additional that, that meant the, uh, is, is the unit. Well, I use, I use this, this notation for I would use just the diamond notation for the multiplication, not the mapband. Uh, so this is also an, an, an equation. And it turns out that this, that this whole, uh, uh, the, the solution for this problem involves so-called free algebras for a, for a given, uh, for a given uh, domain. So, um, and free, with free, free algebras, we, we are quite of, uh, used to in Haskell, though usually in, in a little bit higher setting, like if we speak about free monads or freer monads or coyonida functors, things like that. Uh, less often we speak about free monoids, but it, it also happens. But the, the, in the first part, I'll, I'll, like to like focus on the on the algebra part. So 
So no mods for, for the, at least for the first part. And okay, so first uh, first definition. So let's say that we have uh, um, we have a, a set of algebras. Let's call it V. This is just a set of algebras of the same of the same type, where this type is that they have the same symbols, so we can speak about it. Um, and one would ask where where an algebra f that belongs to this set when it is free and what, what does it mean that it is free in this set and freedom is something which which we think that is like it has the most uh, freedom to do and and this to do is which usually in mathematics refer to have morphisms from to any other object. Like it's very easy to map to other things. Because if you have something that has many uh, equations, like if you consider set of algebras that do not satisfy this, so like non-associative monoids, and then you pick a monoid uh, or semi-group that is associative, you will have a very hard time to find maps into non associative things because this is, this is a constraint that, that will be, will be helpful. Ah, maybe I should also uh, mention one thing here uh, the, the notion of a, of a homomorphism. So if, if one has two things like that, Algebras, let's say one is U operation at I. Um, we need to distinguish these symbols for the one algebra and for the other. And, and algebra B with, with the same kind of symbols. We would like to know what, what are maps from one to the other. Uh, and this should be actually straightforward. What, what should the definition of a homomorphism be? If you know what is a homomorphism semi groups, it's, it's a map from one to the other that preserves the diamond operation. So something that if you have f of a times b, it should be f of a times f of b. If you throw more than a monoid, you throw more the identity, then you throw one more requirement that the that the entity is preserved as well. So so that that is how it should look like for a uh, for a operation that has zero RT. And if you have any other operation that has like more uh, um, variables that you can put into it, it, it should. It should be like this. So if you have f of, and here you have a1 and some funny symbol, uh, a n, this funny symbol is, uh, this is the right one. It should be f, f1 f of a n. So you want to have the maps that preserve the, the structure that you can then speak about. Um, and, and homomorphisms are, are really nice to consider because they, whenever you have a homomorphism, the image of a homomorphism is always an algebra of, of the same type. Uh, you can consider quotients, you can consider subalgebras and things like that. Uh, and 
And now coming back to what it means to be a free object. Uh, so if we have our class, that call it class mode B, and if we have something here, which is an algebra F, uh, and it should be, um, 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 and we have and we have a subset here. Uh, let's call it uh, G for generators. And this is this is just a subset. Like you pick some elements there. Uh, it will actually turn out that everything will be built out of the generators. That's why they're so so called. Then then the property is like that. That whenever you have a map. Uh, from from G to some other algebra, uh, let's call A, which belongs to to this set of algebras B, and this is just a set map. There is no structure here. You just throw the generators somehow into an algebra. And the requirement is that this this will always extend uniquely. This this means that it extends uniquely to homomorphism. And in, in a sense, it means that um, there is no choice for this homomorphism. Like, if you give its value on the set of generators, there is only one thing, one way of doing them. And um, some examples. So, for example, if if we pick, uh, let's start with semigroups. If we have semigroups have only one operation, so it should be quite quite simple to do. Uh, or no, let's take even a simpler example. Let's take this example that has only uh, this distinguished element. So uh, for, for this case, uh, we have, uh, let's, let's think of what would be an algebra generated by some set G. So we have a set G, uh, and then we have a F, with a, with a distinguished element, we know that here is some memory. And what we know that whenever we, we, we map these things, we know how to map this to make a homomorphism. But as you, as, you, as you have this equation here, you don't have actually choice what to do with this memory. It must go. To the ninety here, because we're considering only the algebra that have ninety. Um, so actually, this f will be will be just g with, with this with this memory thing, and then whenever you have a map from G to, F, to any other algebra, with, uh, which is just a set with a distinguished element. However you map those, you will know uniquely how to define a map for this algebra. Because what, what you need to do is to map the, the memory. So this is a very, very simple example. But nevertheless, it will be, it will be useful, useful a little bit later. Then, then for semi-groups, we have some kind of operation. So let's think about uh, G, um, G first, let, let it be a, a set with a single element. Uh, so how would F, uh, how F has to look like? It has to have this F has to be a, a semi-group. So we have to somehow produce also this element. And we also need to produce uh, 
this element. And we also have to produce uh, this number is function the operation. Yeah, it's it's the semi-group diamond operator. Um, and these two must be equal. And, and in mathematics, people find a nice construction to fir first work out what is a free algebra without any laws, without any equations. And there is a description that actually people in, in Haskell community, I think, would really like because it's uh, it's about terms, like the like terms we have in Haskell. But the terms here, you, you want to uh, construct the terms using your operation and nothing else. So you, you take your set, and then you take all these kind of expressions, and you, you build a, a really big set. And then you can formally define the, the diamond operation on, 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 this, on these expressions, if you take one expression that that belongs like a star and another star and then the multiplication of star and star should be oh it should be this one and and you pull this in, in inductively like if you take a more complicated thing and multiply it with something more complicated then you find in the set that you generated that the proper element. And, and this is how people go free algebras without any, any laws. And then there is uh, a description how to, how to, uh, how to build equations in, into, into the, the, the theory. Um, so this is something like uh, operation tree, like syntax tree, yes? Yes, ex exactly. It's, it's, so uh, then you interpret it in, in, in some specific algebra that you want to. Exactly. Yes, exactly. And this is the free property that you can interpret it in any algebra of your type that has this kind of operations. Uh, and then you can also impose relations which are associativity, like take a quotient. By, by some kind of relations that uh, relates uh, things that you want to be equal. Uh, uh, yeah. So, for example, for a for a non-associative monoid, you would come up with this all these things that will be different. But if you think about associative monoid, then this two will be equal, and you. For for any uh, any expression that you can build, any term uh, that is how it is called in, in universal algebra, you, you will actually build something of this type that is the, the diamond, I don't know, sets like n times with this element by itself. So you will end up with non-empty lists. And the non-empty list is a free semi uh, and we can we can we can prove it uh, if we take what we want to show we want to show that uh, if that is a free semi group over a one element which is this star and if we have a star and we know how to map it to any other uh, semi group, so this maps to A. And here we have non empty lists uh, non empty star. Uh, and how to extend this map to, to be a homomorphism? Like, if we have a list of n, n stars. Mm -hmm. 
it, it must be marked to A times A and, and times. Because we want this diamond operator to be preserved. So there is no, no much choice when we fix how to, how to map this star, how to extend it to a semi-group homomorphism from the whole non-empty list. We just pick the first element, throw it as A times and recursively do that until you, you, you reach the end of the list. And similar thing is with uh, with, with monoids, like uh, if you if you pick a monoid generated by a single element, so this is our set G, and we have a map to a monoid, monoid M. And here we have uh, that this, this is part of our free monoid. Generated by this set G, which we don't know yet what, what it is, but we'll figure out. Um, uh, we want a unit homomorphism. Uh, so what, what we know about this map, we know that we have this map D that must be preserved, that goes to map D. And we also know that whenever we take uh, A, I'll stick with the diamond notation because it's simpler than writing map and um, if we take A times B, uh, and this is our f, then we want it to, to go to f, f times f of a times f of b. Um, so what kind of, and we can, we can do the same procedure actually, that we start with this our star, and we know that we have, we have the star, then we know that we have to have star, uh, diamond star, and then and then three times, and, and, and so on. But the difference with, with semi-groups is that here at the beginning we also have time. Does it sound like something? List. Yeah, this is this is the empty list. This is the list with, with just one one star. This is list with two stars. This is list with three stars. And so on. And well can we can we define this F on, on this things? How to map F of three stars, for example. Yeah, just f of star, which we have, and then? Yeah, exactly, so to the same. Um, will it be a homomorphism? It's kind of trivial, but it's always good to ask. By definition, it is, because this is how we define multiplication here. Like a star times star goes to f star to the square, so it's fine. And if you take star 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 times another bunch of stars, then this is the sum of, the, of those lists, and this will be preserved. Like everything works pretty nice. And this is sort of the simplest case. Like we took only one generator, so everything is. Nice and easy. Um, but we could, 
we could actually try to draw uh, something for two generators. Let's try with. Um, um, let's try with semi groups. But it's nicer to draw it as a as a diagram. So we have we have two generators. One is going up, and so it will be called U, and and the other is called right. Go to the right, and we can. What we can do from, from, from this, you can go, you can associate them, like you can multiply them. So you can take u times r, which would be go up and then, and then right. Or you can go up and up. Or you can go up and right and up. Or up and, and so on. So, we would have something something like this that is kind of fractal tree, and it, and then the multiplication on this graph would be you take one path, one description of the path, which is says go up and right and right and up, and another one, and then you say ah go first first description and then do the second. So like you have you have for example. A root which goes like this times another one which, which goes like this. It would be go first here and then, then the other one. This would be the multiplication. So the arrows uh, become shorter, yes? It's, it's becoming shorter so we can draw. Uh, okay. Not but, too. But it, that, it, that, this is the, otherwise it's just like a clip, you know, like gosh on the teachers. Uh, I'm not sure, but yeah, because, the How do you did it? Uh, if the arrows are becoming uh, shorter, then this is not commuted. It's, it's more no, no, don't think about the, the, the length of the arrow. Only, okay. only matters that, that it, it, it says go up or go right. This is the only, only thing that we care in this description. It just looks nice when you, when you draw it. It, it looks nicely like a nice fractal, and and the difference with a uh, with a free monoid would be that we also have this stay stay move, don't move for some kind of terms. And then, for example, for groups where you have also inverses, where you can say uh, you can go down. It would be this whole. You would have all, all the directions, and you can go right, up, right, left, down, down, right, and then follow follow the path. And description is arbitrary. Right? So this is just an example of the morphism. This is just an example of a free object with with two generators, and. And the thing is that the, the, the free, which is, which is visible here, that if you have one description of, of, a, of a path and another one, then, uh, then they cannot meet if they are not, not the same. You cannot have up, up, and then right, and some other description, and you will end up in the same place. You see, you don't have any, any loops here. Like you, you, you don't go here and here and here, 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 and you end up in the same place. Like in, in some monoids, there are, there are elements that a squared equals a. So it would be like go up and up, and you haven't moved anymore. Uh, yeah, the, for example, uh, Z. C2 with, uh, with two elements, 0 and, and 1, and with addition, modulo top, modulo 2 plus modulo, modulus 2. So this 1 plus 1 equals 0, for example, in this model. There's some kind of equation that you go up and up, and this is actually the, the, the 0 move. 
So you have kind of a look. You see? And, and this is also a very nice pictorial way of thinking how things fold when you start to have some kind of equations, where equations mean this kind of laws. Uh, yeah, and, and then uh, the, the, the other nice parts about this equational theories, so the theories of algebras which come from kind of equations like the associativity or unitality of, of the of the of the multi element uh, is that they um, they always appear from they always have free objects in themselves so whenever you do whatever kind of algebraic structure that only laws that we impose are are this type of equations that are equations based on your uh, operations, they always come with free algebras. They are always there. And always, any other algebra is a quotient of the, of, of the free, of some free algebra. You just have to take uh, probably many, many generators, uh, but there is a set of generators that is sufficient for that. Um, and then there is a um, um, very nice categorical part of, of this theory that actually deals with monads, and this is how monads kind of appear in category theory. Uh, not only, but yeah, this is one, one sort of uh, Filled of full, full of examples, and um, okay, I think I'll I have enough to jump to the Haskell part, which will try to try to implement this in Haskell, and it actually turns out that um, this is possible with a bunch of crazy extensions and. Uh, So, so what, what, what I, need, um, I need, I need first to speak about this type of an algebra. So, uh, for, for that I define this type family, which is algebra type. And the first, uh, it will have, have two, um, uh, it will play two, two types. The first will be, um, type of a free algebra that we will speak about. So it will, it will try to define these algebras which we, uh, which we consider, and the other will be used to, uh, to put constraints on it, like a monolith constraint or semi good constraint or something like that. Um, and And then I want to have a class to, to, to describe free algebras of, of a given type. Um, where this M will be actually a, a free algebra over, and it's, it's star to star because the first star will plug the generators into it. So we need the generators somehow. Um, and it has two, two methods. It has the embedding of the generators, so if we take A as the type of our generators, we want to uh, embed it into, into our free algebra M of A. And then we want to have the, the proof that it's a free algebra, so we want to have that for every algebra of the, of the right type, so this D has to has to has to have this constraint that M imposes. For example, if M will be the free semi-group, 
this constraint will be that D is a semigroup, uh, or if M will be the free algebra of a mono for monoids, it will be the constraint uh, of a monoid. Okay, and then the, the free property is that whenever we can map this generators A to D, we can always extend it to a homomorphism from M of I to D. So, so this is the, uh, the very uh, essence of, of what the definition was. And let's, let's take a look at some examples. Um, where is source? Can you see me? Yeah. Is it enough? Sure. Um, so, maybe first examples, and then we'll come back to the operators. So, uh, first, non associative semi groups. Okay, the, the semi groups are nice because they are just, they have just one operation. And we can try, and it's kind of non-trivial that has two, uh, two arguments. And let's try not impose any relation. So what would be a free, free algebra without any, any generators? And we, we've seen it already, that this is this tree that has always like, two ways of going. Uh, so, um, so we always have the generator. We have to somehow embed it, so we, we, we put a constructor for it. And then we always have to have a way of multiplying things. So this is the other constructor, that it's saying how to construct the rest of the terms in this, in this algebra. Uh, and it's a semi group because uh, Because the, the this diamond operator is just defined if you have uh, two semi groups, you just use this star column, star column to construct the, the, the result. And this is, this is the column, star column has the right type. And, and it's, uh, it is a um, the, 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 the style constraint is that you know, where it is, uh, uh, one second, this is not this. Ah, uh, it's here. Uh, Yeah, then uh, the, the instance of the free algebra for, for this free semi group is that the generator is the gen map that embeds generators. And the, the, the free, so if you have a map F and we have something of something which is of type free NA semi group, so either it's a generator. Then we know what to do with this because we have to map it to f of a because this free f must extend the f. Uh, so this is how we must do that. And then for, for the multiplication, if we have this constructor, we have to uh, just go recursively and take free f of a and multiply it with free f of b. And this is this is the um, free algebra instance. And uh, another example, um, there is another. Um, let's find another example. Ah, if 
Another simple example is, is this pointed algebra, which just have the distinguished element. So, so the class pointed, they just have an empty. Uh, the, the unit type is pointed. The, um, what the, where is what I want to speak of? Ah, then maybe your value is pointed. Nothing is the distinguished element. And then actually maybe is the free algebra of this of this type because you know how to embed the generators using the just and. Um, and then, if you if you have a maybe of a, and you want to construct free f, so the nothing must must go to empty because it's it's our chosen uh, distinguished element, and it must be preserved. And then on the rest, you must map, map it to f of a because it must extend the f. So there's no. No choice. So maybe it's a free algebra of of this type. And then the list that you already see. And it, okay, and we could go on and on and on and discover many, many other free algebras. But let's let try to find out what actually freeness gives us. Because surprisingly, or not, it gives us quite a lot. And it turns out that every uh, free algebra in our sense, which is which is something of kind star to star. So it looks like kind of a function that it takes types and, and produces a type, and maybe it's a factor, maybe it's even applicative, and maybe it's a moment. And actually, it is a moment, almost. Um, and you'll see in a moment why it's the almost. Um, so let's let's go back. Uh, yeah. So let's let's try to put things out of out of the free and the gen. Like it's just two maps, but surprisingly, uh, it can be combined in quite a few ways. So if we take three of identity, we'll actually get a map from M of A to A for any, any algebra of the same type as, as our free algebra. So this is kind of a fault. Uh, and for lists, or so for a free algebra of uh, over a, over a good type or for a free semi group, which is non empty list, this is actually the fault. Uh, so, this is one of those things that we can get. Then, if we compose free with gen, so this means that um, um, you take um, you take actually two free algebras and take generators of one and map it to, the, to, to somehow to the other. You will, you will get a map from one free algebra to the other free algebra. Uh, and this will actually, this might change the algebra type. For example, you, you might get a map, get a map from um, So here, what are the required constraints? So M and N are free algebras, but also uh, N of A has the same type as N, which is, which is to say that, uh, that N has more lows than, than M. So for example, semi-group. Uh, would be like that, that has more lows, no, uh, monolith has more lows than a semi group. So you might get a map from a, a semi group to a monolith. And you can hoist the free algebra this way. 
Uh, and then, if you think harder, then you will find that you have something that looks like uh, a function, like f uh, But the, the only thing is that it comes with more constraints, and this is the only reason why it's not a functor in like a Haskell library style. Because we well we have this constraint that of a free algebra m, that m is a free algebra, which would be fine, but the other one actually prevents from, from building a functor instance because it gives a constraint on the on the codomain of this map from A to B. So B has to be algebra of the same type as M. So whenever you have a map between two algebras, um, or, no, whenever you have a map between the generating sets from A to B, you can get a map from free algebra generated by M, A, to free algebra generated by B. And this, this constraint is for that, that this M of B is also a algebra of the same type as, as M. And it actually is only needed um, to define this map. Whenever you would use it, it will be satisfied. Because it's always it's always true, you can see it and prove it, it's just that the Haskell compiler cannot do that for you. It's the only reason why you, why you cannot put that. Uh, put this in a in a in a functor instance for for the M, which is a free. And then uh, I think you might be able to put it in for the my contact, you know that's in the in the new JC that I know that's I haven't I haven't tried. Yeah, but I probably haven't tried. And and okay, so I'm um, I have background in mathematics, so for me, monads are not, they don't come from, from the bind operator, but they come from the join operator, which I, that's why it's first uh, here. Uh, and the join is like you, you have m of, m of a to m of a, so you can always um, squeeze some other tree and, and get it. And, and get the end of it. And actually, the formal free has the right type. And not only the right type, but also all the laws will be satisfied. It will be uh, the associativity law for the, for the join, and the, the unit law for the join, which is the unit we have in the definition. It's the gen, which is the map from A to M of A. So we have the return for free. Because it's defined in the um, yeah. So so we get the join, and yeah, we can we can if we have a join, we can get the bind for free. It's always this form, formula that you use map and join to, to get the to get the bind bind. So always, whenever you have a free algebra, it always it's always a mon. And, and, this, and this is how actually uh, lots of examples of monads come from. That you consider a class of algebras like monads, and uh, then you can construct a factor that, that takes a set. From the set, you can take a free monoid, which is kind of bigger structure with everything that it has, it has the operations, it has the set, and then you can forget about the operations. And you get a set back. And this is a factor. And, and this factor is actually a monad. And, um, and this monad actually describes monoids in a, in a very uh, consistent way. You can get out monoids out of this monad. Construct some category that, that gives you the monoids back. 
So this, this model that, that you construct here, it actually describes the laws of, the, of this algebra. It des describes that you have uh, this multiplication, but not only it, that, it also describes the, um, the laws of, of it. So like associativity or, or lack of it, or commutativity, if you want to consider commutative, uh, commutative algebra, commutative set semi groups, or things like that. Um, yeah, so, so this is one part. Um, any more questions? Is there a construction for a pizza pizza? Yes. Uh, but, but this is a higher order of it. It's not like applicative factors. Yeah, this is like the second part that I want to uh, try. And yeah, things will behave a little bit better there. But let's let's see what they can what they can say. I can say a little bit more about some uh, some problem actually that there is. So um, one part is um, uh, some kind of equations do not fit well enough into this description. And one simple case is when you want to consider commutative algebra, like commutative semigroups. So semigroups for which a times b is equal to b times a. Uh, and it, uh, if um, ah, so, so, it's okay. uh, so if we um, let's say for three moments, three antithesis. Uh, by the way, abelian is, is the same as commutative. It's just the mathematician which was called Abel was probably first that there was doing like modern algebra. Uh, so his name is is bound to some interesting concept. So these are things that a times b is equal to t times a. And let's start with a free algebra, free point, <coughs> which is a billion, which has just one generator. So we already know what is uh, what, what is the free moment with one generator. Is it a billion? So, what it is isomorphic to? The, the natural numbers, isn't it? Because the list with, uh, well, in Haskell it would be just list with the unit type, is, is just, just its length. And this is a homomorphism of this monoid. So, this free thing that we're, we were considering and it was so uh, mysterious, it's actually just natural numbers, and it's a minimum. So actually, for one generator, uh, we, we, we constructed also a free abelian monoid. But because the, the class of abelian monoids is smaller, they, they will be different at the end. But you need to take more and more generators. If you take two generators, so we get 
we had this two path up and right. And you didn't like that I was drawing the in different different lengths. So now, now I did, but so now I can do that. So up and right and right and up should be the same. So we get to the same point. So actually uh, all, all this all this path that you will be able to get is just this this kind of thing which looks like n times n, the Cartesian product of two two copies of n. Which which is it is a monoid with the with the unit is the, the zero and the addition is is um, it's on each side of the product. And it's it's the free free monoid with with two generators. Zero and one, which which is the right and one is zero. So it can be instead of the Yeah, exactly. Um, it would be just Z times Z. But the thing is that it goes on. If you take five generators, it will be just N times N five times. And this will be a free abelian uh, monoid. Yeah, and, and actually you, you cannot describe this this way. What I what I did when I was starting to thinking about it, I, I did I did this slightly differently. I put this uh, very very the class. The free. Yes. the free algebra class. Um, and we can see it. Ah, yeah. um, so if you if you redefine this class so that it takes another parameter, the Type of generators, so the A will be also in, in, in the in the class declaration. Then you could actually encode a free abelian monoids and free abelian stuff. But somehow you cannot do that um, um, in a factorial way. The, the nice thing about this this declaration is that you you get uh, the F map, you get the join and, and the stuff, which you would not get the other ones because of because of kind of difference. Um, yeah, but okay, there are some pros and cons, like how much expressivity you want from a class and what you want to what you want to get. And And then there is the other part. Five minutes. Okay. Let's um, let's try to be brief. Uh, and it, it turns out that you can you can then you can do the same uh, thing again for higher kind of things like for factors, applicatives, and months. And uh, there is just one additional type family that carries more constraints. And now our M takes something of kind star to star and a star and produces a type. So. Think of a free, uh, uh, free monad. Free monad has, has exactly this kind. It takes a functor and a type, and then you get the type. Or think of a free applicative factor. It's also it also takes something of kind star to star and a type and produces a type. 
or the Coriolanta construction is also of this of this kind. And and then you have embedding of the generators, which which is this Gen one. It has to carry some kind of constraints, but the most important part is that it's a map from f of a to m of f of a. So, for example, from f of a to three of f of a, and there is a, such a map, or or for Colonelda and things like that. So this is the embedding of the generators, and and the free one, which is a proof that it's a, a free object, um, it's, you could actually define the free property without a second argument, without this A to B map, but without it, you, you could not get, um, uh, you could never change the types in, like, in free monad free f of a, you could never change this a's. So if you want to get something that um, um, that carries that so that you could produce an f map for it, you 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 will you will need to add it. So it, it has one thing that is the most important, uh, the natural transformation of the factor f and, and from f of from f to d. Uh, this 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 map which transforms coefficients and then you, you get a homomorphism from M of F of A, which is free object, to, to D of of B, which this change of coefficients is done by this this A to B map. And I'm sure after like ten minutes of thinking you will have Coyoneda, free A and free written down the, the things for it. But the most fun part of it is actually writing what you can get from these two operators. And you can get much more than, than for, for the free algebra of, of this lower, lower kind of normal algebra part. And in, in this case, you um, you can get something that that behaves like a fault, um, which is from m of f of a to f of a. You can get something that transforms this m of f of a to m g of a, and this is the factorial part of this construction that actually because we went higher one level this this m will be a factor but in this f argument not in this a well in this a it will be as well but the most important part is that it will be fun factorial in this f so it will be kind of a um, Factor on factors. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's how it is. Like if you take a free uh, monad, so it's free of f of a. This f is a factor, and it transforms a factor free of f into a factor free of, free of f. So, and it actually turns out that it's a monad on the level in, in the factor category, and this is. This is what you you'll, you'll get here. That, um, you get another device, and then you you can you can get map, uh, and you can get join, which is looks a little bit different uh, than we used to see in Haskell, because it's from M of M of F of A to M of F of A, but this is the this is the M of M of F to M of F. Just forget about the A's because they are not important because we're thinking about the factor category. So these A's are there just by 
by definition. And uh, and you get a bind with if you have a job, you can always define a bind. And this allow allow for uh, this allow for moment that you get. And the part of the, the picture that I mentioned before that the monads describe the algebras, it's the same here. The free monad describes monads that we are used to in Haskell, or free Amiga monad, or Amiga functors, or functors. So you get the monads that describes their lows and their objects. And that's that's a longer subject, so I don't think we have enough time. Um, yeah, but I hope it's enough to make you uh, curious about it more. Any other questions? Okay, then I think, I think we can finish.